Hi, my name is Kevin Sadesky. I'm the Chief Instructor Armed to Defend. I'm an NRA and USCCA training counselor, and I train both NRA and uh, USCCA certified instructors. In this video, I just want to talk about the NRA instructor pre-course qualifications. So to become an NRA certified instructor, there's just some steps that you have to take before you come to the instructor training uh, that will be able to pre-qualify you to do the instructor training. So one of the first steps is that the NRA requires that you, shoot the, that you complete the NRA basic pistol shooting course. So it has to be the official NRA basics of pistol shooting course. It can't just be some uh, concealed carry class or a course taught by an NRA certified instructor. So at the end of the course, you should get one of these two certificates. This certificate uh, was good. I think they were used up through May 2016. After that, they switched over to this certificate. So you got to make sure that your certificate actually looks like one of these. If it doesn't, then it wasn't the official NRA course uh, and it doesn't meet that requirement. The next thing is there's some other pre-course qualifications. Load, cock, decock, and unload of the three action types. So single action revolver, double action revolver, and semi-automatic. And if you do the uh, basic course through me as a pre-course qualifications, you'll actually do those demonstrations within that course. So it kind of makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, if you do the basic course outside of mine, then I'll make you do those uh, basically those demonstrations for me in the course. That way I know that you can complete it uh, successfully as part of the pre-course qualifications. The next one is two malfunctions with a semi-automatic pistol. So these malfunctions are only with a semi-automatic pistol and we have a failure to fire and a double feed. Now the NRA has specific steps on how they want you to accomplish those and you must do it exactly the way they have it written in the pre-course paperwork. Uh, and I'll show you the video, in the video how that is done but you got to make sure you're following the exact steps or you don't pass that pre-course qualification step. And then the last one is the shooting qualification. So with the shooting qualification, uh, you basically you're going to shoot 20 shots. And in those 20 shots, 16 out of 20 have to score. Uh, the, you can spread your shots out of that 20 shots. It's either 5 into 4 targets or 10 into 2 targets. Uh, now, the way it's originally written is you're shooting at 45 feet or 15 yards, and your target is a 9-inch target, and you have to get 6-inch groups. We modify that on our range because our firing line set at 15 feet. So the modification is you're shooting uh, from 15 feet, so it's one-third. It's a third of a target, so it's a 3-inch target, and you have to get 2-inch groups within that target. Now, I know shooting at 15 feet sounds really easy, but trying to get a two inch group inside of a three inch target is not easy. We get at least 20% of the instructor candidates that come out to try it, they don't pass it. And then they can't do the instructor course. So I'll make sure that before you sign up for the instructor course that you can actually verify that you can shoot it. And if you can't, you gotta look for training opportunities on how to become a better shooter so that you can be an instructor. So those are the uh, pre-course qualifications. Uh, we're going to go into the load, cock, decock, and unload the, the three action types. And then we're also going to go into the malfunction of the semi-automatic pistol in this video. Um, but I do want to encourage you that the instructor training program isn't designed for a beginner shooter. If you just took a basic pistol course or some sort of concealed carry class, uh, you felt like you did really well, that's great. That's a good starting point. But you got to make sure that you're instructor ready before you try to attempt to do the instructor training. I don't want to discourage you, but I want to make sure that you're taking the real good steps to make sure that you can qualify and that you are going to be a, a good quality instructor. Now, you don't have to have a military or police background to be an instructor, um, but you do have to have basics, you know, more than, beyond the basics. I mean, you're being, trying to be an instructor, so you do want to make sure that you have a good understanding of how to safely use, store, and do all those things with a firearm. So I'm going to go through the load, cock, decock, and unload technique for the three action types. We have our uh, single action revolver, double action revolver, and our semi-automatic. And we're going to go through these. Uh, this is part of the NRA basic pistol course and the NRA pistol instructor uh, qualification, pre-course qualifications. So I'm going to start with the single action revolver. On the single action revolver, uh, since I just picked it up, before I even picked it up, I would have determined my safe direction. So my safe direction is going to be that direction. So that's where I'm going to keep it pointed. Uh, and I'm going to keep it pointed in that direction. I'm not going to point it down, up, or any other direction unless I need to as part of the loading. But in this one, I really don't need to, um, other than maybe tilt it a little bit to make sure that the cartridges stay in the place using gravity to help hold them in place. Uh, and my finger is going to stay off the trigger. It's going to stay up here on the frame, away from the trigger, away from the trigger guard. And all my other fingers are going to make sure that they stay away. So I'm going to use, uh, when I hold it with my left hand here, 
Uh, it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, you're gonna hold it with your left hand so that you can run the ejector with your right hand and also load with your right hand. So I'm gonna verify it's unloaded because I just picked it up. To do that, uh, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now it's not on all of them. This one, uh, by just opening up the, the gate, uh, it unlocks the cylinder. Sometimes you have to half cock it or cock it to a certain point to unlock the cylinder. But in this one, just opening the gate unlocks it. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is on the right here on the cylinder on the single action revolver, since I can't have access to all the chambers like on a double action revolver, uh, I can only access one at a time. This little marking is nice because it keeps track of where I am on the cylinder. And I like to use that versus counting because sometimes I might get confused when I'm counting. Uh, I didn't know it sounds dumb, but you know, when you're trying to multitask, it can be easy to get confused. And that's a great marking tool there. Uh, and sometimes if it doesn't have one, I'll mark it myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna verify each chamber is unloaded. And what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna look right there and I see that, yes, there's a hole there. There's nothing, there's no cartridge in there. And then I'm gonna run the ejector just as a double check to make sure, yes, it is unloaded. And I'm gonna work my way all the way back around until I get to that marking. And there's that marking, I've just passed it. So I did one extra. So we're good to go, this is unloaded. Now if I wanna load it, which is the next step, I'm going to take two cartridges. Um, and what I'm gonna show you on this revolver, if you look right there, it almost looks like there's an arrow on the cylinder there. That arrow is pointing this way, which tells you that the cylinder is actually gonna rotate that direction. So as you can see, it does. So when I'm firing, uh, each time I cock the hammer, it's gonna rotate, and then that's gonna line a new cartridge with the hammer and the barrel to be fired. So what I wanna do is, as I load these, I'm gonna set them next to each other. And these are just snap caps or dummy cartridges. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it around until my first live cartridge, well, these are snap caps to begin with, but my first cartridge will be right here. And then this one's going to be a blank chamber. So there's no cartridge there. Now on these modern revolvers, I could load all six in there and uh, it'll be fine, uh, but since I'm only loading two, I'm gonna have a blank chamber and then my first live one, second live one. So when I close this, it's ready to, um, you know, activates it so it can shoot now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my shooting hand grip using my revolver grip, trigger fingers up on the frame, away from the trigger, away from the trigger guard, and then uh, my uh, thumbs are overlapping on the side of the gun. Now, if I wanna cock it, what I'm gonna use is my support hand here, I'm gonna cock it. So now it's ready to be fired but I wanna go ahead and decock it. So the way I'm gonna decock, I'm gonna use my left hand uh, to block the, so it's my support hand's gonna block the gun and the hammer, just in case I was to slip off. And then I'm gonna use uh, my thumb to grip the hammer back, and then I'm gonna press the trigger to slowly release the hammer. I'm gonna keep my thumb out of the way because I don't wanna hurt my thumb. And then there, so there it's completely released. And then I can go ahead and unload it, lift up that loading gate. Again, I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. And as I go through each one of these, I'm going to use the ejector rod. So the ejector rod, my finger's in the way, the ejector rod's right there. As I pull the ejector rod back, you can see it comes through the uh, chamber. And I'm just gonna drive these cartridges out, going through each one of them. And then I'll come back around until I know that I've cleared it all. And then all I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, set it down because I'm done working with the single action revolver. So that brings us to the double action revolver. Now on the double action revolver, it does allow you to take this, on this one, the cylinder can rotate out. And so what I do is I got access to all my chambers and I can see in them that they are cleared. And if I wanted to, I can even run the ejector here to kind of as a double check. I, but I'm still gonna determine safe direction, keep the gun pointed in that direction, and I'm gonna keep my fingers away from the trigger, away from the trigger guard uh, throughout this, um, unless I need to press the trigger, which I will when I need to decock it. So again, as I load it, uh, I'm gonna be, I will have to tilt the gun down slightly so that when I load it, what's gonna happen is gravity's gonna keep these cartridges in. And again, since I'm loading two, I'm gonna put them next to each other. And this also has an arrow, in this case it's doing the opposite direction. So the arrow is actually pointing this direction. So what I'm gonna do is as I load it, I'm gonna take the first empty one, I'm gonna line that up with the hammer and the barrel and the first cartridge is gonna be right next to it. So as I load it and I get my, I'm getting my shooting hand grip as I'm pressing it in, there it is. 
So my first cartridge is gonna be here, my second cartridge is gonna be there. Again, these are dummy rounds, so they're not live cartridges, and this one is blank. I could, again, I could load it all up, you know, have every cartridge or every chamber full, uh, but in this case, I don't want them just loading two. So if I wanna cock it, I'm gonna use my support hand again to cock it, just like on the single action. And if I wanna decock it, I'm gonna use my support hand to block it. As I press the trigger, I'm gonna slowly release that hammer, slowly letting it down, all right? And it's out of the way. And then I'm gonna use my cylinder release to drive those cartridges out. Now, if you notice the way I'm holding it, I got uh, my pinky and my index finger on these two sides of the gun. My middle, um, middle finger, ring finger are through the cylinder well. That way it's not gonna close on me. I got full control of it. I can rotate it and my thumb. Now my thumb can help me with the cylinder, but it can also run the ejector and I can drive these cartridges out, get them out of the way. So now I'm going to again verify it's unloaded, checking the chambers, checking each one of those chambers, making sure they're unloaded, and I can, again, I can run the ejector to do that. So that's how you hold a, uh, the revolver as you're loading it and unloading it. All right, so that was the load, cock, decock, and unload of the revolver. That's a double action revolver. That brings us to the semi-automatic. So with the semi-automatic, uh, we got magazines. So the magazine is where the cartridge is held when they're ready to be fired. So I'm going to take a couple cartridges, I'm going to load them in the magazine. Um, so when I load the magazine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grip it. I, I'm right-handed, so I grip it with my left hand. I can get a good grip on it. But the dexterity things I do with my right hand, which is pushing the cartridge down to drive that follower down, and as I drive it back under those lips. So, so I'm pushing the follower down and driving the cartridge under the lips. You can't press the cartridge through the lips because... The, car the lips, these are the magazine lips here, they're designed to stop the cartridge from going up. Now the back of the cartridge, if this is the back of the cartridge, the flat end, is going to go into the magazine under the lips is where the case is, and then the bullet end sticks out of the magazine. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that second one in there. Okay, so now I got my loaded magazine. Now when I pick up the semi-automatic, determine safe direction, I'm gonna keep it pointing in that direction. My finger's gonna be off the trigger, away from the trigger guard. And again, I got my shooting hand grip on it. That way I know where all my fingers are and it's gonna be safe. I'm gonna check the chamber. Now it's gonna be hard to see inside this uh, for the video as far as seeing the chamber, but the chamber is basically the end of this barrel. Uh, it's where the cartridge is gonna sit when it's ready to be fired. I'm gonna visually and I'm physically checking. Now I'm not sticking my finger through the barrel. I'm just literally sticking it right at the beginning, feeling yes, there is a hole. And then I'm gonna check the magazine well. The magazine well is where the, car the magazine goes in. It's just straight down and I'm gonna stick my finger through there and I'm visually also looking down. Now notice as I do it, I'm not tilting the gun. I'm gonna bring the gun up to my eye level so I can see into the chamber and I'm gonna bring the gun close to me and I'm gonna look straight down into the gun to see that there's nothing in the magazine well. Okay, so now when I insert the magazine, the bullet's end of the magazine uh, the bullet end is going to be facing towards the target where I want to shoot. And so I'm going to insert that magazine. I don't have to smack it in. Basically, I want to make sure it clicks into place. And there you can see the top cartridge. It's sitting right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grip the back of the slide. I'm going to pull back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hand moving back to let it go. That way I know it's got full force to load that cartridge into the chamber. So at this point, this is a loaded gun. Uh, now, of course, I'm using dummy rounds, so it won't actually go bang if I was to press the trigger, but for the purpose of this load technique, this is a loaded gun. Now, to unload it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the magazine release. So on this gun, the magazine release happens to be right there. Uh, a lot of guns have the magazine release where the trigger guard meets the grip, uh, but not all do. So I'm gonna use that, and I'm gonna catch the magazine as it comes out. So I'm catching the magazine as it comes out. I got the magazine, and then to unload the firearm itself, because I still got a round in the chamber, I got to get that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the slide back. I'm using my slide stop here. I'm pressing the slide stop up towards the slide as I pull back on the slide, keeping my finger off the trigger, away from the trigger. And then I'm going to verify the chamber and the magazine well to make sure it's unloaded. And then I can set the firearm down. Now I still consider this a loaded gun because the magazine's loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and unload the magazine by pressing. So if you press back on the back of the cartridge, you can unload that magazine. And then you can do a visual and physical check on it also to verify that it's unloaded. So that was the load, cock, decock, and unload of the single action revolver, double action revolver, and the semi-automatic.
With the instructor qualifications, uh, so the NRA pistol instructor pre-course qualifications, there's two malfunctions that you have to do with the semi-automatic. So I always get the question, well, do I have to do the malfunction of the revolver also? No, these are specific malfunctions of the semi-automatic you have to perform. The first one is a failure to fire, and the next one is a double feed. So we'll start with the failure to fire. So with the failure to fire, I'm going to set it up. I'm using some dummy rounds here. These are just some plastic trainer cartridges. I'm going to load a couple rounds into my uh, magazine. So my magazine is unloaded. I'm going to load a couple rounds in it. I only need like two rounds. Okay, so I got two cartridges in my magazine. Now with my semi-automatic uh, determined safe direction, that's going to be my safe direction. And I'm going to make sure all my fingers are away from the trigger as I pick it up. I got my shooting hand grip on it. And I'm going to verify it's unloaded. So I'm checking the chamber visually and physically. And visually and physically checking the magazine well. So this firearm is cleared. Uh, now when I insert the magazine, again, the bullet ends are facing towards the target. I'm going to insert it. Uh, now when I release the slide, I'm going to grip the back of the slide, pull back, and let it go, and now it's ready to be fired. Now again, it's dummy rounds. Uh, so for the purpose of this, uh, what I'm going to do is demonstrate a failure to fire. Since I got dummy rounds in there, when I press the trigger, it's just going to go click, simulating that failure to fire or misfire. So as I press the trigger, so that was the click. So now uh, what I got to do is wait 30 seconds. So I'm going to count out 30 seconds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So after the 30 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and go through the, the steps. So the steps are, is you're going to tap the magazine. So you're going to check the bottom of the magazine. And we check the magazine. We make sure it's basically we're checking to make sure it is seated into place. And then we're going to rack the slide. So racking the slide is going to clear the bad cartridge out of the gun and load a new cartridge into the gun. And then we can go ahead and perform it again. Um, but I'm not going to perform it again. Uh, you don't have to perform it again during the demonstrations. Uh, but you, if you're shooting, you could go ahead and shoot again. The reason we wait the 30 seconds on the failure to fire is in case it turns into a hang fire. A hang fire is just a delayed fire. So you press the trigger. You think you get a, um, a you know, you get the click, no bang. It's a misfire. Uh, but you want to keep it pointed in a safe direction just in case if it was to go off delayed. After 30 seconds, uh, both the NRA, USCCA, they both say that uh, 30 seconds a minute, uh, then it's clear. You know, you can clear it and it's good to go again. So now to unload it, I'm going to remove my magazine. So that's the first step in unloading the semi-automatic. Then I'm going to lock the side back. I'm going to visually and physically verify that it is unloaded, checking the chamber, checking the magazine well. And then for the, uh, I can go ahead and set that down. And then the magazine, I'll verify it's unloaded, doing a visual and physical check. So that was the failure to fire. Now on the double feed, I'm going to set that up by as I'm going to put a cartridge, one in the magazine. And then uh, when I pick up the firearm, I'm going to verify it's unloaded again because I just picked it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in the chamber. So I got a cartridge in the chamber and I'm, I'm tilting it downwards a little bit. I don't have to tilt it down real far, but just making sure gravity keeps that cartridge in there. And again, these are dummy rounds. And now I'm going to insert my magazine. So I got my magazine inserted. Now when I release the slide, I'm going to see if I can get a better view of this. When I release the slide, notice that the slide doesn't go all the way forward and you have the cartridges are actually jammed up in there. So you got the one that's in the chamber and then you got the one on top of the magazine that's trying to be fed into the chamber. So that's why it's called double feed. Now to fix the double feed, what you're going to do is lock the slide to the open rear position. And so the way you're going to do that, you're going to use a slide stop. So make sure your finger stays off the trigger as you do it. But I'm going to push up on the slide stop as I pull back on the slide to lock that slide back. So now the slide is locked back. So it's in the locked position. And then now what I can do is I can easily take the magazine out. And then I'll clear the firearm. Sometimes you can clear it just by shaking it a little bit and it'll fall out. Uh, but sometimes you might have to run the slide a few times. So if I to get it cleared out and then lock the slide back and then visually and physically check the chamber, check the magazine well, make sure it is unloaded. Um, and then uh, you can set that down. And again, I'm going to go ahead and verify that the magazine's unloaded and it's unloaded. So that was the uh, failure to fire in the double feed. 
Um, the reason that we lock the slide back on the double feed before we try to take the magazine out is that the magazine becomes jammed in there on the double feed. So let me just reset that so you guys can see that. So I'll visually and physically check to make sure it is unloaded. And then I'm going to put this cartridge in the chamber. All right. And then as I insert the magazine, set up that double feed. Now, with that double feed in place, if I try to take the magazine out, uh, you can't really see, but the magazine just doesn't want to come out because it's literally jammed up in there. So you really have to apply a lot of force to that magazine to get it to come out. And so that's why we lock the slide back. And then if you want to, you could rack it a few times to make sure it's cleared. And then visually and physically check the chamber and the magazine well. And then again, verify it's unloaded. It's unloaded, so we're good to go. So again, that was a failure to fire and the double feed with the semi-matic part of the instructor pre-course qualification.